Would Belchase or Carver start off the 4A playoffs with a victory in Plaquemines Parish? Plus, Slidell hope to keep its solid season going against Central Lafouche. And Chalmette traveled to Thibodeau to take on the Terrebonne Tigers. That and much more tonight on 4th Down Friday. From Channel 4, this is 4th Down Friday. Presented by your Southern Quality Ford dealers. We begin tonight the opening round of the Division II playoffs. 13th seed Lusher and Goodby to take off 4th seed Hannon. The Hawks, perfect during the regular season, 10-0, carried into tonight's game. Hannon's Brendan David not getting slowed down by the mud or the Lions. Brendan David, 60 yards to the crib. Quick 6-0 lead after the missed extra point. Lusher on its next possession. Can't handle the snap. Wyatt Coffey picks it up. He heads into the end zone, 31 yards, scoop and score, a 12-0 Hawks lead. Still in the first quarter, Hannon goes up 18 on the Brendan David one-yard touchdown. Hawks fly past Lusher in the second, into the second round, 37-0. Playoff time in the metro area. What up? Welcome to Fourth Down Friday. I'm Ricardo Lacombe. Tonight, prep football teams to get the drive to the dope. We've got first-round action from Class 4A in our game of the week. Carver and Bell Chase exceeded expectations this season. Both want to keep their dream seasons going in the postseason. Andrew Doak was in Bell Chase for this playoff matchup tonight between the Rams and Cardinals, and he joins us live with more. Hey, Andrew. And Ricardo, the field tonight and the weather conditions really became the equalizer in this game. The running game was relied on heavily. The passing game was basically non-existent. We saw four fumbles between these two teams because the football was like a greased pigskin. And it really turned into a grinded out slop fest type game to start the 4A state playoffs here in Bell Chase. To start out the 4A state playoffs, Carver traveling to Bell Chase tonight. To start the scoring out, Bell Chase converted quarterback Ralph Jones barrels in from seven yards out. Cardinals take a 7-0 lead on their opening drive. Following drive, Carver responds. Look at number two, Randolph Armstead gashes Bell Chase in the teeth of their defense for 28 yards and a score, six up. A couple drives later, Carver on fourth and six at the Bell Chase 16. This was an interesting play. Leads to an 84-yard return. It was initially thought to be a live ball backwards pass that was fumbled, but instead the refs talk it over. They call it an incomplete pass, and it's a turnover on downs, remaining tied at six. It wouldn't matter anyway, though, because the Cardinals march at 84 yards, capped off by a one-yard quarterback sneak for six more by number four, Jordan Mariana, and the Cardinals take a 12-6 lead into the half. Carver deferred to the second half, so they started with the ball, and Quincy Curry hits Justin London on a 35-yard bomb. Another PAT is missed, and it's 12-all. After a turnover on downs, Bell Chase takes advantage. Mariana pushes it across the goal line from one yard out again. They add two on a two-point try, and it's 2012 Cardinals by eight. Next drive for Carver starts with seven minutes remaining in fourth and nine. Quincy Curry barely picks up the first down with his legs, but the drive continues. But Carver would need another on the drive. Fourth and nine at the Bell Chase 19. Curry waiting for someone to get open. He finally launches it left, but it falls incomplete. And Bell Chase holds on to win in the first round of the playoffs, 20 to 12. Well, that was a good win, you know, and I mean, we played good. Like I told the team, running the ball, playing good defense, that's how you win in the playoffs. That's how you win games in the playoffs. When we pound the rock all day. We praise that all week. All we do is pound the rock. And, you know, they're fast, but our defense came up with a big stop on us. We praise, pound the ball on them, and we win the game. Slow them down, and we win the game. Now, look, I checked with Siri on my iPhone. She said it was about 52 degrees here during the game. Look, with the weather, with the wind and the rain, I can tell you it felt like it was in the 40s. Bell Chase head coach Stephen Myers was in shorts. He said in his 30-some-odd years coaching, he said he's never worn long pants on the sideline. It was a part of the mindset he wanted his team to have, and they answered the bell tonight. Until then, here from Bell Chase, Andrew Doak for Fourth Down Friday. Guys. Andrew, get inside because it's too cold. Warm up. Thanks, man. Two Catholic League schools meeting up in the first round of the Division I playoffs. St. Aug and Holy Cross at Joe Ganey. The Tigers beat the Purple Knights two weeks ago, 24-20. Different story tonight. St. Augustine, perhaps motivated by that, going for it on fourth and four early in the second quarter. The gamble pays off. Justin Doyle right up the gut. Ten-yard touchdown. 7-0 Purple Knights. Later in the second, 
A third and long for the Tigers. Wide receiver screen to Jalen Johnson, and he takes this one to the crib. 26-yard touchdown. And then the spill afterwards, kind of slick on the track there at Joe Yenny. Look out. Seven all game at recess. Third quarter after St. Aug gets a great return on the opening kickoff. Dole keeps the legs moving, gets in for a second touchdown of the game. Freshman doesn't look like a freshman. Eighth touchdown on the season. Purple Knights back in front 14-7. After Holy Cross fumble, first play off that turnover. Purple Knights run the RPO. Trey Woodson, the 20-yard touchdown toss. The Tylee Keasley, 20-7 St. Aug advantage. The Purple Knights win the rematch, eliminating Holy Cross 34-9, the final. What a season for Slidell. The Tigers captured their first outright district championship since 2003. Now they host their first playoff game since 2004. That was also the last time Slidell won a playoff game. They were welcoming in Central Lafouche to begin the 5A playoffs. Tigers would get on the board first. Harlan Dixon, who's been playing well all year for the Tigers, 31-yard scamper for the game's first touchdown. Seven-zip Slidell. Larry Favre's group looking to end the 14-year postseason victory drought tonight. And it was a cold one tonight up there. Uh, the defense playing well in the first half. Trojans quarterback Jacob Baker under duress. Matthew Retief takes Baker down for the sack. Later, a third down for Central Lafouche. And there's going to be a big hit in the secondary, forcing the Trojans to kick a field goal. They would miss that field goal. Tigers would pitch a shutout in the first half. Slidell pulls away in the end, winning 35-21. Coming up, due to field conditions, Terrebonne hosted the Chalmette Owls at Thibodeau's home stadium. And would De La Salle or Vanderbilt Catholic advance in the Division II playoffs? But first, some scores from around the metro area. Terrebonne came close to perfection, one win away from a 10-0 regular season. But the Tigers tripped up by Destrehan in the season finale to fall short of that goal. But plenty still in front of Terrebonne. The team enters the Class 5A bracket as the seventh seed, facing Chalmette in the opener. The Owls seeking their first playoff win since 2004. This game moved from Homa to Thibodeau High School because of the poor field conditions. Owls soared to the lead midway through the first quarter. Brendan Horman, the tough run, two-yard score. Chalmette up 8-0 after a successful two-point try. Tigers answer. Ja'Kai Douglas decides to keep it, gets in for the three-yard touchdown. Terrible would miss a two-point attempt, so it's an 8-6 Chalmette lead. But on the ensuing kickoff for the Owls, Vartex Whidbey fills it at the 10, breaks the tackle, gets to the outside, and outruns the entire Owls kickoff team. 90-yard kickoff return for a score. Owls build on that lead, 15-6. Tigers answer that later in this crazy second quarter. Anthony Ruffin takes the handoff. He won't be denied. Two-yard plunge into the end zone. Terrebonne trailing 15-12. Tigers tied up before the break on a 36-yard field goal by Johan Cruz. And he ends up kicking a game-winning 29-yarder with a second left to lift Terrebonne to a 24-22 win. To the Division II bracket, 12-seed Vanderbilt Catholic, 5th-seed De La Salle at Joe Brown Park. Fourth quarter, Cavs up 35-0. Great play fake by De La Salle. Faked out even our camera guy, Montreal Johnson, says, hey, I'm over here in the end zone. It's now a 42-0 De La Salle lead. Later, Terriers trying to scratch the scoreboard, but this pass would get picked off by Ashton Bates. Vanderbilt would end up scoring late in this one, but the Terriers just overmatched tonight. De La Salle wins and moves on 42-7. Some love the state tournament continuing at the Pontchartrain Center this afternoon. Division I semifinal between top seed Mount Carmel and St. Joseph. Senior Ellie Holzman 
just a dominant force on out, uh, outside hitter for the Cubs. 19 kills. Cubs go on to sweep the Red Stickers in three games and advance to tomorrow's Division I championship match where they'll take on Chappelle, who won their semifinal over Dutchtown. That'll do Fort Dow Friday for Andrew, producers Danny Rockwell and Christina Jenkins, and all the photographers who braved the cold tonight to bring us highlights. I'm Ricardo LeCompte. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here next Friday night.